Hi guys, welcome to Cryptids Canada. I hope everybody's having a great day. If you're not, I hope your day gets better after hearing these amazing stories. Before I get started, please do me a favor. Hit the bell for notifications and hit the like button if you like the video. And subscribe if I'm worthy of your attention. Okay, so please sit back, put your feet up. And have a nice long relax, because I'm about to tell you a really good series of stories. Okay, dear Leslie, I have a few stories to share that are not mine, but were shared with me by my father. He has many of them, but here are three for starters. My dad was born and raised in Utah and currently lives there now. After moving around the western United States during the early years of his career, nearly every time I talk to my dad on the phone, I ask him to please tell me his Bigfoot stories again. I'm going off memory, so I'll do my best to not leave anything out. When my father was a teenager, he landed a job working solo in a fire tower during the summer. The fire tower was situated high up on the mountains on a peak. There were stairs going up to the living quarters and a catwalk that went around it. To get to the fire tower, he had to drive several miles up a dirt road and hike the rest of the way. The nights would get cold in the higher elevations, so he would need to build a fire to keep warm and also for cooking. He gathered firewood during the day and stacked it neatly below the catwalk. When he needed wood, he would carry it up the stairs, and since the door didn't close properly, he had to use one fist to bang on the upper side of the door, the same side that the doorknob was on. The door would spring open, and he could carry the wood in without having to put it down or fumble with the doorknob. So, one evening, he was lying on his sleeping bag, which was on the cot, when he heard his neatly stacked firewood being disturbed. Then, something very heavy jumped up onto the catwalk. It did not take the stairs, but rather it jumped. Then, it slowly began to walk bipedally around the catwalk. When it got to the door, it stopped. My father was a big man, around six foot four inches, and hunted since he was old enough to walk, probably, lol. Suddenly, there was a loud bang, as whatever had struck the door, just like my dad had earlier in the day. It struck it in the same spot, except on the side the hinges were on. Therefore, the door did not spring open. My dad said that he looked and saw his rifle was next to the door. And if it sprung open, it would have been behind the door. He knew that if it had struck the other side of the door, he would be completely helpless. So he decided he was going to shout as loud as he could to try to scare it away. Also, he was too afraid to move, so the rifle was a moot point by now. He opened his mouth and he tried with all his might to yell, but no sound would come out. He was literally scared speechless. Eventually, whatever it was, walked away from the door and left. The next day, my dad looked for tracks, but as the ground below was mostly gravel, there was no tracks to be seen. Story number two. This one is a story that my dad loves to tell about three hunting buddies of his. He didn't go along on this particular hunting trip, but the story is still a very good one in my opinion. So, three of dad's friends went on a hunting trip in the high Uinta Mountains of northeast Utah. The men got to their destination and decided that one man would go up one draw to the right, another would go up another draw to the left, and the third man would go up the middle. They would all meet at the top. 
Well, the two men on the right and the left sides made it to the top, but the man going up the middle didn't show up. After waiting a sufficient amount of time, they decided to go back to the truck to see if he was there for whatever reason. So they went back down the mountains, and when they arrived at the truck, there was their friend. He was as white as a ghost, sitting in the truck with the doors locked and the windows rolled up, trembling with fear. They would finally calm him down enough that he could finally speak. He told them this. He was hiking up the mountain when he came to a rock face with a ledge about nine or ten feet up from where he was standing. He looked up at the ledge, and standing there was an enormous Sasquatch looking down at him. In his panic, he dropped his rifle as he turned and ran all the way back down to the truck where the other two men had found him. His friends tried to convince him to go along with them back up the mountain and they would retrace his step to find his rifle. Additionally, they were not convinced he had seen a Sasquatch, but most probably a tree stump or a large boulder. Finally, he agreed and they retraced his steps all the way up to the rock face and the ledge where they found his rifle exactly where he said he had dropped it. When they looked up to the ledge, there was nothing there at all but blue sky. After that, they were convinced he had seen what he said he had seen. Story number three. One of my dad's good friends approached him at a church gathering one afternoon and asked if he could speak to him. He had something on his mind and he didn't know who to talk to about it, but he had to get it off his chest. So, of course, my dad obliged, and they went to a more private spot to speak. This gentleman's son was driving home from college, somewhere around the town of Strawberry, heading to Vernal, where he had to slam on his brakes to avoid slamming into a Sasquatch that had walked out from the right side of the road, strode across nonchalantly, and disappeared down an embankment but not before turning its head and looking at him. The young man was so close that he was able to see the grass and other debris in the creature's hair. Needless to say, he was very shaken up and did not want to talk to anyone about it. But he did confide in his father, who thankfully believed him and thankfully confided in my dad. Okay, that's it for now. I hope you and the Cryptids family enjoy these second and third hand stories. Take care and thank you for being so kind and pleasant to listen to. Signed, Christine. Well, I have to say thank you for taking the time to write out three encounter stories, whether they were yours or not. We don't care. (laughs) We like them all. And if you have more, we'd be happy to read them and listen to them. So guys, I think that's going to be it. I know it wasn't a very long video, but you never know. The next one might be a little longer, hopefully. Anyways, you know I love you. Please be kind, hit the like button, hit the bell for notifications, and subscribe. Okay, we'll see you back here in a couple of days. Bye for now.